Hey everyone, welcome back to Open Hybrid. Our next guest, our last guest actually, is a spoken word artist and educational entrepreneur with more than five years of experience as a teaching artist. She explores many artistic mediums in the name of healing and creating, and she's the owner of Poetic Black Girl LLC, a Black woman-owned business that specializes in personal development with services and creative workshops centered on mental health and art. Uh, Poetic Black Girl is dedicated to offering creative outlets for individuals to begin or continue their journey of healing and self-expression. Here's Shit more spoken word artist, educational entrepreneur, and Poetic Black Girl owner, Andrea Augustus. Hello, hello. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah. You know, I'm excited to dive into this conversation with you. Uh, just even in your introduction, it says a lot, right? Because um, you already know uh, purpose. You're operating from a purposeful foundation of like, you know what? Um, I'm driven by um, raising up the Black voice. I'm driven by bringing mental health awareness into the forefront. I'm raised up by... Um, you're fired up, I should say, by making sure that art is the, um, I guess, the medium in which it's being uh, brought into this light. And so um, how, how did you get there? Yeah, of course. Um, well, I guess uh, teaching people how to tap into the arts came from me having a time when I was just so drained and so depleted from my own mental uh issues and things that I was going through that I felt like I had nothing to tap into and it was it was so strange um because like I come from a strong educational background I always tell people like school was very very you know easy it came to me easy until I got to college right once I got to college it just kind of knocked me out and I didn't really feel like I fit. I didn't really feel like I But what, what happened? What made you feel like you didn't fit? You, you, yeah. Is that your state of mind or is that the circumstance in which the environment loaned itself to? Right. I would say a little bit of both. So individually, I was going through um, some depression and anxiety from being away from home for the first time. I was a first generation a college student on my mom's side. So I didn't really know how to, I guess, uh, easily adapt to that environment. So there was a lot of isolation because I'm used to my family and being around my family. And here I was not even with my friends, like my high school friends all went to different schools. And in addition to not being around my friends, like it was a, a private college where there were a lot of nuns and also a lot of uh, Caucasian people and then there was me trying to fit in in the Black Student Union but also going through all of my emotional things so I really ended up like tapping into to art if you were to see my college dorm room it looked like a, a museum exhibit I had art all over my walls I was like one of the only people to have like a, a decorative fish tank I, it just like Pouring into art was a really great way for me to express myself. And although art is not, a, you know, traditional therapy where somebody sits you down and gives you a strategy to work through things, as right. someone who like comes from a, I guess, a poorer background where I, I didn't really know is it about therapy if I can afford it and it's stigmatized. Right. Able but, to, but before you even continue, I want to know: Were you an artist already, or is that something that just came from you? Yeah, so I've always been an artist. I've okay. always like been an visual artist. artist, right? But I mean, art comes in different forms, right? And I always say one feeds the other. But visual, it takes something to really, you know, uh, explore and, and really release from that that perspective. Yeah, definitely. Have you always done that since you were young? Yeah. So I was like in the third grade or fifth grade, like in the fashion club. With I remember Miss White. And Miss White would encourage me to make them fashion designs. She's like, no. Shout out to Miss White who's getting shouted out. Shout out. <laughs> um, but also, like, I explored different mediums. So in addition to being, like, a visual artist, like, early on, I realized I really like to, to read and write. I haven't always been so outspoken. I used to, you know, find my conversations in books and in uh, in with my teachers, really. I always really like giving presentations and things like that. So, 
um, tapping into the, the art of speaking as a spoken word poet was something that I really stepped into when I was in, um, in high school with my senior project. That was my first time ever really performing it. And it, it naturally came back when I was going through tough situations because the performance was so therapeutic. Writing was so therapeutic. Seeing people's reactions to me was so like satisfying as like as this little black girl who feels like, you know, I'm kind of mousy. I'm always in the book. I'm really into education. Nobody really is listening to what I'm saying. To be able to get up on a stage in front of people and just have them listen. Right. So we jumped already to your performance uh, art, which is fine. It's all intriguing and interesting. But I still want to know what happened when you were at private uh, college and the art that you said that your your dorm room was full of and, and, and whether or not, you know, that's where you found your calling because prior to getting on air, you say you didn't even finish college. You quit. Yeah, definitely. So I was in university, going through all of those mental health issues um, and a really toxic relationship. My uh, parents were telling me that they were getting a split up and it was just so, so much going on. And I was always used to being in an art class when I was in New York public schools. They're pretty good at giving you at least one art class, but in this private university where I'm studying psychology, all my classes were like core classes. So in order for me to release I had to do something and that's when I started doing doing the art but still it was very overwhelming for me I didn't I was right because you were navigating it on your own independently oh by yourself without that support system that you're used yeah. to having right so yeah. no this is all interesting keep going keep going yeah so then I ended up um actually dropping out of school terrible terrible just relationship uh so much manipulation so much going on with nobody telling me like you know hey this is what this is not a good idea it's not a good idea for you to be in this relationship so I, I just kind of ran I ran away from school I ran away from what I felt like I was experiencing there and I moved back home and I felt like really I just felt so bad I kept seeing all my friends on Instagram and they're I'm um, scrolling and they're like yay you know I'm doing great in my first year of university and I'm like well, I'm home and I'm hosting at different restaurants in New York City. And, you know, I just I just felt crappy. So in order for me to like work through the crappiness of feeling uh, just not good enough, not like I was uh, being successful in the way that my parents and that I saw. The, the, according to somebody else's expectations. You know, that yeah. I was experiencing all that. Yeah, so I'm yeah, like, what yeah. can I do? What can I do? And it always comes back to art and poetry for me. So I, I started writing really uh, impactful pieces about how I was feeling. I started spilling all the tea on my relationship. I started spilling all the tea on how I felt suicidal. I started spilling all the tea on how anxious I was feeling. And then I sat down and, and really tapped back into that art of performance. So then it went from writing it to, all right, I'm going to memorize this and I'm going to share this and see who who can relate. I'm going to find my people because my people, they weren't at university with me too much. And my right, people, right, right. <laughs> you were like, yeah. I feel like that. Yeah, I wasn't there what, with the nuns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's kind of how that got birthed it, out of a really like, a uh, challenging educational experience. I started, you know, pursuing poetry again, and that led me to the path of going back to school to study art education and art therapy because I was already using art as my own therapy. And I was like, you know, I really want to be trained and get more information in order to lead other individuals who may be struggling down this path of creating their own art in order to heal and address some of those some of those traumas in an accessible way because. Again, not everybody has insurance, okay? And right. if, if you do have insurance, then I know me, I want a therapist that I feel like I can relate to. So if you have right. insurance, but the only therapists that are in network are like also people that's not your people and in your community, sometimes you want to figure out how you could do it for yourself. So right. that's something I got really passionate about in school. So I was studying art education. I was studying art therapy. It was bomb. And then my school went bankrupt and shut down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was like, universe, what are you trying to do? <laughs> so at that point, I um 
you know, I was already pursuing the art thing. I was right. already pursuing the art therapy thing. So I had this level of resilience where I knew that when things started to get tough for me, the the best way for me to cope was to lean into my community of people and go ahead and perform poetry, really be vulnerable and tell people what I was going through and then just move through it, like grow through it, like push right. through it in order to get where I want to go. So I went back to school, <laughs> to Lehman College to study art education. Uh, we love a CUNY. I'm not going to lie. It's affordable. They give you what you need. And it was, it was really great. And then the pandemic happened. Oh my goodness. This and is like I a story like, that just never ends. And you know, uh, we're going to be running out no, but, 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 but I do, I do want to say, because we're running out of time and we have to get to Poetic Black Girl, right? Yeah. So we can talk about the pandemic happening and then you, what, doing classes virtually, uh, I hope? <laughs> you know, I try to do the whole virtual class thing, right? I try to do the virtual class, but I'm really an in-person, let me feel your spirit type. So I then was like, I'm going to be an educator in the way that makes sense for me. And the way that made sense was for me to organize my independent LLC and to create uh, art and therapeutic programs, uh, specifically the Healing with Arts programs, which I offer to nonprofits and schools to help students work through their emotional challenges using art. But I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I don't need permission. I already know enough. I've already been through enough. I know I can help people. When I get on stage, people dig it. They like it. They ask me how to do it. I'm just going to do it. So I just did it. I just did it. And and I've just been doing it since. And I really have been enjoying the process of working with students independently and, you know, uh, just honing my craft as a spoken word artist, hearing the the stories that students make and hearing their uh, them be vulnerable as they talk about their fears and and in high school and as they're going to college and just being able to be still in their age range, right? And say, right. girl, I know, but I promise you it gets better. And I could I could help you express yourself if that's something that you feel you need right now. So it's been pretty yeah. rewarding. Oh my gosh. Well, you, you you bring a really big smile to my face Thank just you. so you know. <laughs> Thank no, you. you too. Just, journey we just took and and the conclusion of like you know what i i just gave myself permission to yeah. do it because at the end of the day um you come with your own life experience and not only that and i'm going to leave it on this note because we got to throw to your performance which you're going to give us a taste of what we're talking about which is kind of like a a blend of like spoken word with motivational speaking yeah. but at the end of the day and this is my favorite phrase to use is you're operating with the intention of leaving things better than you found them. Yes. Brava. Brava. Yes. Brava. Brava. Brava, Andrea. Yes. All right, Andrea, we got to take a quick break. And you guys don't go anywhere because when we return, Andrea Augustus is going to perform for us. So you don't want to miss that. <laughs> 